I am super excited to show you this new technique I've been using on my wide field astro photos. So pictures taken with a camera and lens and a star tracker. And this technique I've been using, it's not something I invented by any means. I'm sure others have been doing this, but I personally just started doing it and it's a game changer. So I wanna show it to you. So to start off, we'll go into Adobe Bridge and I'll show you the, the data I'm working with. So these are 60 second exposures of the constellation Orion that I captured back in 2021. Pretty cool, so they were shot with a Sigma F 1.4 24 millimeter lens, a nice astro lens, 60 seconds at ISO 3200. I think I captured them to create a time lapse, but I'm now gonna bring these into Deep Sky Stacker to stack them. So if I go into my folder here, my raw files, I'll grab all of them here. And you can use whatever stacking program you want to use. Deep Sky Stacker is just nice and fast. That's why I like it. And it works for wide field photos as well. So because these have already been registered before, I can see the score of these frames. And you just want to make sure that you're stacking the best images. There's no real drop off in here. So I'm going to go ahead and stack all of the files that I've selected with my red headlamp in there and all. So I'll just check all stack check pictures and it looks like I got uh, an hour total on this wide field Orion project. So I'll check back in when this is done. Deep Sky Stacker has finished stacking my 60 second images and now we're gonna go to PixInsight to open it up. So I'll look in the folder where my raw files were and we have autosave 001. Now this was captured with my Canon EOS RA so it's an astrophoto it's an astrophotography modified DSLR. So there's gonna be more hydrogen than you would see if you're not, if you're using a stock DSLR camera. Nothing to write home about here. I'm gonna just rotate the image frame clockwise. Pretty underwhelming so far, and you might think, wow, what a waste of time. But we're gonna do some serious stretching here to see what we've got. So first up, I'll go into the handy screen transfer function. I'll open up the histogram transformation and I'll just do an initial stretch just to see what we have in here. Not bad, we can see the constellations, the, the many stars, nothing's really popping. It's very faint, the nebula in there. You can see a tiny horse head and Orion. Pretty cool, but nothing too exciting. So at this stage, at least we can see what we're working with here. And I'm gonna go ahead and crop out where the trailing trees or horizon are there. It's unfortunate to crop any of this, but that's not gonna help us at all to, uh, to have that in there. So dynamic crop. And I'll grab all of this and just skip out the bottom there. Boom. So here's our image. Here's what we're working with. You can even see the Pleiades at the edge of the frame. Okay. So from this step, we've, we have our image, we can see what's in there, but the, the nebulae aren't popping. So what we're gonna do here, and this is really the X factor to the whole thing, and what I hadn't tried before, is using star exterminator to separate the stars and the nebula on a wide field image. I wasn't even sure if it would work if it was able to pick out these tiny pinpoint stars. So I'm gonna open up RC Astro Star Exterminator, the plugin, and have generate star image checked off and run that. This is where the magic happens when we have our starless wide field image. Let's see how long this is gonna take. Yeah, we'll check back in in a minute when this is done. Okay, so we have our starless image here and our stars separated from one another and we'll put them back together. But first we really wanna do some stretching of the nebulae in here. So if you look at it at this point, you can see some interesting structures, Barnard's loop and the horse head and a little tiny Orion nebula and the, the rosette, but it's pretty underwhelming. It's just kind of barely there. So at this stage, if we just do a quick auto stretch, you can see there's a pretty bad gradient happening in there. Even though this was captured under dark skies, there's still the glow of the city. You can't get away from it. So we're just gonna do an automatic background extractor to get rid of that gradient. And the only things I've changed from the default settings are the function degree, I've got it set to two, and then the, the correction mode is subtraction. We'll just run that. It's pre pretty quick and dirty. 
There we go, and we can see from the background model that it's done pretty well exactly what we wanted it to. So we have our you know, new and improved version of the image, and if we just do an auto stretch again, look at the incredible details in there. But we can be a little bit more specific about the stretching than that. So I'm gonna turn the stretch off, and we're gonna use a tool called GHS. So this is our, our starless image we're gonna work on. And in process, all processes, it's called generalized hyperbolic stretch. This is a tool that a lot of astrophotographers are using for their deep sky images, but I've found that it works really, really good for wide field images as well. So I'm just gonna reset it here. And so we're on our current image, and then I'm just gonna click the log button here and then see, see the, the majority of the image data is in this hump here. So I'm gonna click right in the middle of it and then click send to SP, which is the symmetry point. And this is gonna help with our stretching to kind of bring things back down to uh, reality. So with that done, I can turn log off and then I'm gonna to go to a real-time preview, a little circle here, and now we can do some stretching. So the stretch factor is the main thing you're gonna be controlling. So as we're pulling that up, you can see a lot more nebulae. And the symmetry point, you can pull at that as well, just to bring things back down to normal. It kind of balances things out for lack of a better description. But you can actually go pretty aggressive here with that stretch factor. And you know, ideally you would do this in iterations, but it's just so exciting to see these objects pop out. Just as a first step, I'm gonna leave it at that and click apply. So we'll close our, our preview here and look at our background image. Look at what's hiding in there. You can see the Rosette Nebula. You can see the seagull over there, uh, the Witch Head, uh, the Flaming Star Nebula, and look at the California and the Pleiades over to the side. So it's a pretty incredible way to stretch your images using the GHS on a wide field project, who knew? So now I'll just go into Photoshop and put it together and show you the difference between this and the original image we started with. So here's our original image open up in Photoshop with just the general stretch applied. The pretty well straight out of the camera stack of all of our raw image frames. Then we have our starless image that we've applied GHS to, which has a lot going on, and then our stars. So there's a few things to note here. One of them is that you might want to do something with your stars before you apply them back in. A couple of common ones are to adjust the colors a little bit, and sometimes they look a little green and you wanna change those more to the blue, or sometimes you have kind of a magenta hue going on. So for that, I like to go into the color mixer and the saturation, you can turn down the magentas, and then in the hue, you might wanna turn some of the, the greens to the bluish side of the spectrum. And then lastly, sometimes I like to turn up the oranges and yellows to get those warm stars to really pop. Now we haven't minimized the stars at all, uh, so they're in their just their natural state. And for this image, I think it works, uh, but you can try to minimize the stars to get the nebula to really pop. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and select all, copy, and paste on top of our starless image here, starless. And now, because we're completely covering it up in the layers there, we're gonna change the blend mode to screen and now we can see that underneath. And I don't know about you, but that's pretty exciting for a wide field photo already with very little done in terms of processing other than that GHS. Nothing done in Photoshop yet, really. So if we just merge these together and then compare this to our original image, I'm just gonna paste it on top. Look at that underlying nebula pop out there. So hopefully the wheels are spinning for you with this technique of what you can do because look at even the dust in Taurus is now visible there. It's, you know, it's, it's very subtle and, you know, whatever you want to do to process it from here uh, to make it even better is up to you. So with the full version here with the stars, just as an example, you could go into the camera raw filter 
and do some things like uh, clarity, play with that a little bit. Uh, the saturation and do some selective stuff where, where you're only boosting the magentas, noise reduction, whatever you wanna to do to it from here, but it's a great way to start and it's a great technique to use for your wide field photos and one that I just discovered literally today and I wanted to share it with you. So I'll do some more work on this and share it as a final reveal image, but hopefully that was useful to you and it's something you haven't tried before. Clear skies to you and I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. Thanks a lot.